So, what I'm trying to impress you here is that the indicator for emission, it could get very complicated uh, as you look, as you do angular dependent uh, for the emission uh, experiment because the intensity, the density of state that you, you probe are different and different direction. And it depends also on the polarization ranges that we talked about. Now, getting back to the service state, we just talked uh, briefly that uh, service state, in the case of services, uh, only the parallel component of your momentum vector should be conserved, should be related between initial state and final state. Uh, and how do you probe this? And the, the way you can probe to identify a service state is what? Is that, well, uh, you can, you can uh, change the photon energy. Okay? If you change the photon energy, so here's a, an experiment that people do uh, in uh, early days. Uh, it's a paper, uh, some data I took out. Uh, a classic uh, experiment, actually, if you look at silicon 100, we construct the surface two by one. So this is a clean surface. So we are probing silicon uh, electronic structure, right? And the surface plane that you're looking at is the 100 uh, plane. And uh, 100 plane has been constructed to the two by one. And here I'm looking at normal emission. I'm moving my detector normal to the surface, okay, pointing down, directly down. And uh, I went down to the synchrotron. I can work tune my photon energy, right? If I have a left source, a uh, laboratory photon source, I cannot tune my photon energy. And what that gives you, the ability of tuning my photon energy is very powerful, is that uh, I can, in effect, change my perpendicular direction of my k vector, right? Remember, if I can change my photon energy, I can change k perpendicular here, right? K perpendicular here. Uh, if I just have one photon energy, I, my photon energy is, I, I can change, uh, I can move my angle of my detector and therefore looking at different k parallel, but I can never change my k perpendicular. My k perpendicular will be fixed. Uh, in order to change k perpendicular, I need to change my energy. And so, what happens if you change your k perpendicular by changing your photon energy? What happens is that any state located on the surface will be will be unchanged. Why? Because you are not uh, because um, you have a fixed. Uh, in fact, you have a fixed uh, uh, parallel component here. You're, you're changing. Uh, k perpendicular and keeping k parallel fixed. And k parallel, of course, uh, give you uh, only, only service state are invariant uh, in k parallel. Uh, so if you see a service state, when you change the photon energy, this peak should stay the same, at the same energy. So you can see the signature of a uh, service state very quickly if you can change the photon energy because you just take measurement as you go through, uh, and find any state near the Fermi edge, because they have to be very close to the Fermi edge, uh, and, uh, and if it's stationary, that is the service state. If it's not uh, a service state, what would happen? What would happen is that you see a band movement, okay? So let's say you look at this band, this C structure, there's a little band you may not be able to see very well, that's moving as you change the uh, Photon energy. And there's another band here that's moving as you change your energy. This is known as energy dispersion. It's dispersing, moving along uh, as a function of photon energy. Uh, and what is happening is that it's like this. is that if you look at your um, electronic band structure, when you change the photon energy, what is your effect? You're, you're, moving, uh, you're moving in your residual scale from tau in a direction in, in a direction in your residual out of real so that corresponds to k perpendicular in the perpendicular direction not does not involve any parallel component okay and, and of course in that direction you also have the electronic structure which could look like this okay and so what's happening is that if you are looking at band c for example right and you're changing your your photon energy you are changing k perpendicular, you are moving in this direction, 
which is in the perpendicular direction of the surface in the free ion zone, your whole energy position is moving quickly. It's changing like this. And same with D, uh, structure D. You're moving along this line. And you are just basic, basically, you're mapping out your electronic structure in the perpendicular direction. That's all, right? That's basically what you're saying. Uh, you, you're changing your proton. So you can allow you to map in the perpendicular direction that you cannot do if you just have a fixed photon source. In the fixed photon source, you are only probing your Brion zone in the pa service parallel direction, K, per K parallel. You cannot probe uh, K perpendicular where you have to. And of course, in that case, if you're just probing K perpendicular, whatever you have on the surface should be unchanged. And that's why the service state is stationary in your in your K perpendicular direction. Okay, so um, so hopefully uh, uh, I uh, uh, give you a little bit of taste of this uh, angular dependent. So angle, sometimes it's called angular resolve for these missions. Uh, a rather complex uh, technique, but uh, very precise uh, and involve uh, expensive machinery such as a synchrotron to allow you to probe essentially a three-dimensional structure of the surface by um, using your detector in different ways, by looking at different ways. And finally, just to remind you, the surface sensitivity uh, depends on the mean feedback of your uh, electron mean feedback inside a solid. This is a universal copy of the electrons, uh, and that gives you uh, a particular surface sensitivity that we talked about uh, for this uh, universal mean feedback curve that we discussed earlier. Okay. So next, uh, I want to uh, talk, tell you a little bit about uh, the last bit of our discussion here for this course, which is as uh, uh, chemistry. I'd, I'd like to tell you a little bit about at least some some idea about chemistry. Uh, so when you read your uh, material, you can think about this uh, chemistry. How do you, uh, how does the surface affect uh, chemistry? And there are some interesting things that you can do. And, and one of the key points is interaction between your surface and a gaseous particle. Okay? Because, because you, you can imagine uh, uh, in the early days of surface science, uh, the surface itself, you, you prepare a very, very clean surface. And why do you do that? Because you want to simplify the structure of your surface, right? Because if you're starting with a natural surface, it's extremely complicated. You have various kind of dirt, you have various kind of defects, uh, structural defects, and chemically defects you know, on your surface. So in surface science, people try to simplify the problem by preparing a pristine surface, well-structured, well-ordered, very clean, Okay, so we define our starting point, initial state of your system very, very well, very, very clean, simplify it. And then uh, you try to do chemistry on it. And then, and the first thing of doing chemistry, the simplest way of doing chemistry on it, is to hit it with some gaseous particle. Because uh, in, in the case of, a, if you dip it in a liquid, as most chemists do, in a beaker chem type chemistry, many things could occur. And you, you cannot really model it very easily. If you throw a molecule at it as a free molecule hitting this surface, right, it's much more easier to model the movement of this uh, molecule, the, the transport of this molecule onto the surface. And then maybe one day uh, one can use this knowledge to describe what's happening on the surface and in, inside a solution. And maybe eventually, uh, uh, talking a little bit about catalysts, okay? Uh, as far as uh, chemistry is concerned, liquid-based uh, chemistry, beaker-based chemistry. But already, you know, already just gas surface interaction is industrially important because there's a lot of gaseous process, especially in oil refinery, natural gas, natural gas uh, refinery and so forth, that require a, uh, a understanding of catalytic process between a surface and, and your chemical, which is in gaseous phase. And obvious example, of course, is your catalytic converter inside in your car, okay, to, to eliminate CO emission uh, from the exhaust 
of your time here. And that is clearly a gas solid interaction. Okay? And, uh, and of course, the catalyst itself is very complicated, right? The catalyst itself is a uh, nano object, uh, normally, is a nano particle uh, embedded in some uh, uh, support. Uh, and so you have to consider first uh, the, this, this nano particle, what kind of phases does it have? Uh, it, uh, does it have, for example, 100111 uh, facet? This is known as facet on your palace. How does it, the reactivity of each of these facets respond to the reaction that you want to make, like respond to CO uh, and, uh, or, uh, or uh, water contamination and things like that? So selectivity and reactivity goes hand in 